I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. O Master Eternal, give to each of us the deep consciousness of thy presence, that the spirit of fraternity may so direct our thoughts, guide and control our hearts and lives, that we may become through thee servants of all mankind. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Não, não. 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 Não, And uh, with this tribute, Joel, I'd just like to thank you from all of us, all brothers of Alpha. Thank you for not only loving, but showing us how to love. Thank you for not only caring, but showing us how to care. Thank you for taking care of us, holding us accountable, and most of all, just being an amazing brother. Joel is the epitome of showing how to walk in the light of alcohol. And for that, I can never do Thank you. Thank you.
good and goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The Apostle Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Reading in the King James Version, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also would sleep. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. I'll be reading the gospel according to John. If you could please stand. And the King James Version records it this way. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God's word for God's mighty people.
Ms. Deidre Locke, President. 
the African and Methodist Episcopal Church, the Fifth Episcopal District, which mission, Women's Missionary Society, Life Members, Patricia F. Fuller, Co-Chairperson, Life Members. African Methodist Episcopal Church Women's Missionary Society, the Youth Department, Mr. Marquise Johnson, Midwest Conference White PD President, and all the members of the Midwest Conference White PD. First, African Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Edward Walzer, Jr., Senior Pastor, the historic Allen Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Teresa D. Ambler, Pastor, Historic St. Mark's African Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Shirley D. Hermans, Pastor, Great Tabernacle African Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Brenda J. Smith, Pastor, Historic St. Mark's African Methodist Church, Topeka, Kansas, Reverend Shirley D. Hermans, Pastor, Bethel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, Dr. Mark A. Smith, Senior Pastor. St. John AME Church, Topeka, Kansas, Reverend Mary Maggie Hall, Pastor. Trinity African Methodist Episcopal Church, the lay organization, Ronald Scroggins, president, or chapel, Kane Brandt, African Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Carmine B. Woods, pastor, St. John AME Church, Omaha, Nebraska, Reverend Benjamin R. Bell, pastor, First chapel, AME Church, Reverend Ronnie L. Clark, senior pastor, Winter Haven, Florida. AME Ministerial Alliance, <laughs> Reverend Dr. B. Gordon Glenn, the third president. Ebenezer AME Church, Reverend Rodney Moody, pastor. St. Luke AME Church, Lawrence, Kansas. Reverend Rachel Williams Glenn, Pastor. From the Ray Act Organization, J.D. Satterwhite, Connectional President. Red Chapel AME Church, Reverend Stephen M. Barnes, Pastor. Indiana Conference Lay Organization, Catherine Byers Wooder, President. Trinity Episcopal Church, the Allen Ferguson, Ferguson's Women's Missionary Society, Celestine Gray, Pastor. President, Reverend Stephen Cousin, Pastor. Greater New Bethel AME Church, the Reverend Clifton Neal St. James, Pastor. Grand Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Wichita, Kansas, Reverend Dr. B. Gordon Glenn III, Pastor. The Midwest Conference Clergy Family Organization, Donita St. James, CFO, President. The Power of Faith AME Church of Kansas City, Reverend Julie Boy, Pastor. The Board of Commissioners, Gale Town District 1, Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. Council of Bishops, African Methodist Episcopal Church, Bishop Philip Robert Cousin, 1322 Roseberry Drive, Bowling Brook, Illinois. 
March 4th, 2023, to our former senior bishop retired, the Wright Reverend Philip Robert Cousins Sr., the 96th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, supervisor retired Dr. M. John Cousin and the entire Cousin family, we greet you in the love, peace, and comfort of our risen, conquering Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On behalf of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Council of Bishops offer our prayers and heartfelt condolences for the heavenly transition of Mr. Joel Cousin, the son of the Reverend Stephen Cousin and Mrs. Linda Cousin, first family of Trinity African Methodist Episcopal Church. Many of us, your friends and colleagues, regret that we cannot be with you all in person. However, know that our hearts and minds are with you in spirit and prayer in the United States of America and on the continent of Africa. However, we celebrate with you the life and legacy of your son and grandson. He was indeed a spiritual warrior as evident by his faith walk in living life to its fullest while battling cancer. His obtaining his master's degree and entering the workplace after his initial diagnosis and during treatment exemplified extraordinary courage, determination, and faith. He will be remembered for how he lived as a faithful witness to the glory of God. Likewise, to the cousin family, and friends, we say be strong and of good courage. As a child of God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is with you. He has promised to never forsake you or leave you alone. Call on him in prayer and he will answer. Lean on him and he will strengthen you. Look to him and he will guide you. Go to him and he will comfort you and give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Remember, weeping may endure for a night, but God has promised joy will come in the morning. Psalms 35. Our Lord, our love and prayers are with each of you today and the days ahead. God's continuous blessings of love, peace, comfort, grace, and mercy be with you. Bishop Ronnie Elijah Browser Sr. President of the Council of Bishops, African Methodist Episcopal Church. Trinity African Methodist Episcopal Church, March 4, 2023. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, but also sympathy and prayers to you at the passing of your loved one. We too share your grief. We know that your heart is heavy today, but trust God for the strength to get through this most difficult time. As God's word teaches us, he makes no mistakes, and though it seems too hard to hear, we must keep the faith and believe that there is a heavenly reward. Remember the good times and look forward to seeing him again in glory. Joel joined the church at a very early age. He was always involved in the AME church, both locally and at the conventional level. God bless you is our prayer, and we want you to know that we are standing in the gap, calling upon the Holy Spirit to cloak each and every family member individually and collectively. Sorrowfully submitted the officers and members the Trinity African Methodist Episcopal Church, Michelle Hayes, Secretary. And in closing, 
The family of Joel Cousins wishes to express our sincere appreciation for all the prayers, phone calls, messages, visits, and many other acts of kindness shown during the time of his lengthy illness. Our prayer is that you be blessed. Thank you. At this time, I have the reading to do which word. And we'll take a few minutes to solve music. I've had some good things. Mercy. I've had some things to I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. Yeah, God. But when I look around, Thank you. 
jokes about me all the time. Uh, I still love him and uh, am honored to be speaking. 
I can't pretend to have all the right words for a family so freshly stricken with grief. If it's God's will, then God will, but I know that doesn't erase the pain. Some days will be harder than others. Some days fill with joy. Some days you'll find yourself some days it may feel better to mourn. Every day a reminder of the physical presence that is no longer as hard and painful as that may be. Hold tight to the spirit-filled memories like the ones many of us share with Joel from our days of the life. I won't spill all the info, but if you know, you know. <laughs> Joel's presence was surely a noticed one in meetings whenever he decided to actually go. <laughs> <laughs> Joe served on his e-board post, as goofy as he may have been. Although we'll miss his lighthearted spirit, we'll count this as his biggest win. As we've all followed Joe, Joe's journey, some far and some near, it seems all too unfair. After all the fight, he's no longer physically here. We'll drive ourselves crazy trying to figure out why, why God needed him so young and so soon. We can take comfort in knowing that his day of rest has come that his battles and victories have inspired me on this world. To the cousin family, know that we all loved and will miss Joel and offer this condolence and love for you. May prayers of peace and comfort engulf your spirits in the coming days. John 14, 27 reads, Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, so, my cousin, we were brothers. Uh, all of the brothers and cousins who are here today carry the relationship of cousin, but all of us really are a tight knit group. Um, it takes a lot to actually break through and become part of that circle. And in that circle, the laughter and the joy was Joel. Golden heart, always laughing. He always brought joy to us. And if he wasn't speaking to his brother Drew, he was calling me. Um, we would just sit on the phone for hours and talk about whatever. And even in his time of sickness, I would often ask him, well, Joe, how, how are you doing? He would keep asking me how I'm doing. And he would say, Timmy, I'm here. And I found peace and comfort in those words. So even as his physical body is here, his spirit is here as well. And with that, it brings me peace. And the only way for me to truly pay tribute to my little brother With peace like a river attended my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll.
I don't know if I'm still in shock or in just pure disbelief that we're here today on behalf of the past of Joel Arthur Cousin. My mind can't wrap around the concept of Joel being here with us today. I'm sure we're all filled with emotions of sadness, denial, maybe guilt, or even anger. We have to feel in words to heal. Although it's hard, we must find comfort knowing he's at peace and at rest, not having to fight anymore. No one didn't deserve to go just yet, and life is way too short, as well as unfair. There's never a right time to say goodbye to someone who's been part of your life. Mrs. Cousin mentioned to me a few days ago that Joel made it to his life. <laughs> Joel never did anything to anybody to deserve this, but she's absolutely right. Joel was very kind, caring, and grew up to be inspiring and man. Most of all, he was positive to the very end. With all that's been said, I tended to focus on the positive things, funny memories, the endless laughs and silliness. I remember Joel for several things, always singing, being brutally honest with no filter. And just all around hilarious. I tried to come up with a funny memory to share with you all, and the first thing that came to mind was a pep rally from high school. So long, long story short, there was a donut eating contest. 
Those other closest bring more kill and I decided to secretly sign them up. <laughs> when they called his name, he instantly knew it was us who signed him up. <laughs> the look on his face when he turned around and glared at us priceless. He knew it was us that signed him up. Shockingly, he actually got up and participated as we all cheered him on, of course. Even though he was at first, he still won. <laughs> It was hilarious, and I'm glad you got to laugh about it. I could tell it actually made it good. I love you, Joel. We all love you. Rest in peace, brother. First thing is, I want to kind of start off with the poem. Uh, I think if you guys know it, please say it along with me. Uh, it's called Invictus. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Uh, but before we start talking about it, I do want to say that Joel, uh, Joel embodies this, this poem. Like, you listen to the words. Like, really listen. Right. Read about it. See about it. What it was about. It was Joel. So if you guys mind saying it with me, I'm going to read it because I ain't said it in a while. <laughs> so let's start off with this. Out of the night that covers me, when I just appear from home to home, I thank whatever God may be for my powerful soul. In the veil of the circumstance, I am not a witch or a out. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody enough. Beyond this place of wrath and tears, blue was the floor of the shade. She had the men so years, I shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged the punishment to scroll. I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Amen. Next thing I want to say is I do want to thank the cousin family, Mama um, Linda, Papa Steve, Randy. Thank y'all for adopting me to see you guys. Really means a lot. I love you guys so much. Um, and there's one more thing I want to read that I, that I wrote. Uh, and it's called a letter to my little brother. Um, so it starts off, letter to my little brother. As a big brother, I'm supposed to be the one to help you along your journey and help you with things in life that you may have questions about. Or to steer you in the right direction and watch out for certain pitfalls so you wouldn't have to experience the same ones that I have. But what is crazy is, as a little brother, you taught me way more than I could have ever taught you. Even though I was terrible at Call of Duty, y'all know. <laughs> you would still come to my house to play and shoot me on your team every time. I know you got tired of me asking you a hundred questions today, uh, and you were excited to answer every last one of them. You taught me to never sweat the small stuff and always enjoy life no matter what. You taught me how to be strong. Honestly, I don't think I've ever met anybody as strong as you. You taught me to enjoy every second of life, because life is precious, and every moment is a gift. As your big brother, I'm always going to be here for you, no matter what. And and live my life from the principles you have always taught me. I love you very much, little brother, from your big brother. Thank you. Now we'll have a selection from uh, the young adult, Mario Kawhi.
that's that's why we need to go out there. But uh, today I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Gold and uh, the story that I haven't even told him. Uh, probably because uh, I don't like hearing him say he's right. <laughs> that acknowledgement. Uh, but Joel's charismatic, lovable, you know, strong, like an oak tree, poised like an eagle. Joel is the type of person that would light up the room whenever he walked in, have everybody laughing. He's the type of person that had no enemies. Everybody loved Joel. I even joked yesterday with uh, some of my friends. I said, I know I have a lot of enemies out there. Some people ran on my downfall, but I told them it didn't matter who it was. I had to love it. Uh, he had an inviting nature that just made it impossible not to love. I was lucky to get the opportunity to meet such a great man in Alpha. Since our brother's passing, I've often reminisced over the memories we've made in Alpha, seeing each other at parties, planning events, just chilling, <coughs> strolling, or even seeing each other at an information. ZA in here knows that it's uh, often urged to have a favorite quote. And uh, a lot of y'all might have heard of the quote, birds of a feather flock together. But there's also a second part to that quote that a lot of people don't know that my dad constantly beat into my head growing up over and over again. And the second part is you can't soar like an eagle hanging around turkeys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since my youth, I've tried to keep good influences around. That's why I joined out. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to surround myself, and I did, with well put together men. You know, fast forward about a year down, I was in Missouri for the summer, in between apartments, and Joel extended out as well as the end to me for two weeks in between that time. And during that time, man, we, we had a ball. We kicked it. We partied. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. We kicked it wrong. Having a great time. Uh, I like to say we were making uh, bad decisions, but great memories. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in that time, you know, I got towards the, the point of me being to move into the new apartment, and my dad came up to the zoo to help me move in. Um, and when he came, he, he came to the house, he came to meet Joel. And in there, you know, we were just talking, going back and forth with some small talk. I finally got the chance to, you know, outside and probate and everything to have a, you know, intimate conversation with my dad and Joel. And one moment, the attention turned to me. And Joel spoke to me and he said, you know, I, I need you to have a better semester this year than last because my grades were up to par. <laughs> and I understood that. He said, you know, we need to do better. We need to get our grades up. I'm going to make sure I'm going to hold him accountable and keep him there. And I saw kind of a look in my dad's eye. Okay. I like that. We continued the conversation and it further went to a point where it's time to wrap it up and we're leaving. I'm going to jerk get my keys, go move into my new apartment, Joel walks us out. And when he closes the door, before we could even get to the car, my dad looks at me, and, excuse my language, but he says, that's a damn evil. <laughs> that's an evil. He knew I surrounded myself around right there. He knew what it meant. It meant to hold yourself accountable, to do right. And in that moment, I always knew, you know, Joel was a great friend, but I had something special. Something that will last forever and a best friend. Yeah. And I'll forever cherish the memory we made. Just chilling. The days we turned up. <laughs> the vulnerable moments we cried together. The moments where he got the first news that he was diagnosed with cancer. Just sit there in the moment, take it in, cry on each other's shoulders. Something as simple as just hopping on the game with each other. In the end, I can just say, I was just lucky to have the best friends with you. Mm. Love you forever. Amen. <laughs>
most of you know me as okay, um, but Joel is one of the people, especially the people in my line, that love to call me by my full name, okay. <laughs> and because of that, uh, uh, Joel inherited his name, Joel Chuba. <laughs> Before we get to how we love Jalon Rice, uh, when I met Joel, it was initially in uh, 2016 in Conservation Hall, and he didn't know me, but he was uh, singing, I believe it was for like Play the Heart or something to that effect. Um, and all I saw was a silver fox with a beautiful voice, but um, I had no idea that about a year later he was actually going to be my juice. Um, when I officially met Joel, you know, he, he wasn't an alpha at the time, you know, but let alone the juice like his father and grandfather. Um, you know, he had no tattoos, but he dreamed of having a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> he was into gaming, you know, but always talked about maybe he had a streaming channel or something to that effect. Um, he wanted to have a sustainable workout routine. Uh, something that he always talked about. Um, in addition to that, you know, he wanted to graduate with, with both his bachelors, um, and he had a dream of releasing music one day. He was talking about how he could produce things of that nature. And um, yeah, excuse my language, but he was one funny ass thing. <laughs> <laughs>
I take pride in being a leader of a great man. And there is no way I would have been able to do that without Joseph so Levin. And I have nobody to run. I only had Joseph so Levin. It's just me and him. And I'm trying not to share too much with y'all. I'm trying to get my words together. I'm trying to keep it short. I want to be five or whatever it's time. But as I been trying to navigate this process of grief, I've talked to my mother a lot. She's she's such a she's such a fan of Joel. Who's Joel? The one? He's the he's the pastor's kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. That's Joel. He's the one with. That's what I guess. Yes. That's Joel. He's the one with with the red. Yes. Yes. That's that's Joel. Oh, <laughs> um, in closing, I don't think there's a better brother than John. And even in his very odd and weird way of showing it sometimes, uh, it was something that you could never question, uh, something that you never doubted. It's something that from this day forward, I have a great appreciation for it. I even realize that I do. Well, I miss you dearly. I miss you forever. Thank you.
bounce ideas and action plans off each other to overcome them. Joel never gave up. And his perseverance is a testament to his spirit. We rarely find friends. We can have conversations like that. Yeah, yeah. Especially when we grew up facing that person. Joel's affection. Joel's affection in nature was his greatest gift. With an unwavering spirit, he touched the hearts of everyone he met and never failed to put a smile on someone's face. His heart of Joel never shied away from showing love and kindness. And he made it his mission to spread joy wherever he went. He believed that the most valuable things in life were the people we love and the memories we have. And the memories we create with them. Despite facing adversity, Joel never lost his competitive spirit or his positive outlook on life. He would say, no matter what, you can stay positive and have one leg up on life, even if you don't have one leg. <laughs> <laughs> he taught us all to turn any situation to life and to stay positive no matter what. He was a true example of resilience and strength. Joel's legacy will live in our hearts, in the memories we share, in the stories we share, and in the impact he had on our lives. He lived his life with grace, resilience, and compassion. And we will forever be grateful for the time we had with him. To the family, we offer our deepest condolences. We will always be here for you when you share in your grief. Joel's a remarkable human being. His warmth, kindness, and affection will be remembered by all who knew him. Rest in peace, dear friend, my brother, you are greatly missed and never forgotten.
Spirit. This is Stephen and Linda, one of the greatest honors of my life that you have asked me to stand and bid an earthly farewell to my nephew. I do not come lightly, I do not take it lightly. And then on behalf of everyone uh, this day, also would like to bring you greetings from my bishop, Bishop uh, Reginald Jackson, Supervisor Christy Davis Jackson, who sent their love as well as our mother and father, Bishop Philip R. Cousin Sr., and of course, Supervisor M. Joan Cousin. Uh, again, we stand as family together, and we believe and we know indeed that God always will make a way out of no way. So as we prepare to uh, give some words on behalf of my nephew, whom I love tremendously, if you would just look to the Lord in prayer with me. Lord, I ask this day, that you would fully decrease me 
and fully increase you so that the people would see none of me, but they would see all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And of course, I stand on behalf of uh, my wife, Carissa Lynn, and Miriam and Joe as well, who could not be here uh, with love and with tremendous support. So for those who would today, come on and turn with me to 2 Samuel, if you have your Bibles, the 22nd chapter. 2 Samuel, uh, the 22nd chapter, verses 29 through 31. Uh, shout out to my brothers for all the help and support they give me. Uh, Mike helped me with the scripture. Dave helped me uh, as well. And uh, Phil, of course, and my dad and everyone. So, Steve, we have a lot of help on this one. Dave and for uh, 2 Samuel 22, verses 29 through 31. We find these words. Oh, Lord, you are my lamp. The Lord lights up my darkness. In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall, even with one leg. God's way is perfect. Uh -huh. All the Lord's promises prove true, and he is a shield for all who look to him for protection. Today, as we celebrate the life of Joel, Arthur Cousin, I ask if you would just consider this question with me today as we celebrate this young man. And the question is simply this. How will you spend your time? Oh, yeah. If you don't mind, I know this is old school. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it's kind of funny. I'm Joel's uh, uncle, and sometimes I was uncle, sometimes I was big brother. Every now and again, I, I fill in for the father role. I was some of everything to Joel. So I'm kind of an old school guy on this one. But if you just get old school with me a minute, just turn to your neighbor and look at it and say, How will you spend your time? How will you spend your time? If you don't mind, look to the other side of your other neighbor and say, That's really none of your business. <laughs> To do, they got a thing to do with you and me right now. So you mind with this. I'm a mind. I'm going to buy a mind. So today we're coming to celebrate my nephew Joel. Love this cat. Love this man. Love this man tremendously. And, and we're devastated today. But Joel is a faithful servant. And we know the Bible teaches us that faithful servants get called from labor to reward. So we know Joel is a faithful servant. We know where Joel is right now. We know Joel is resting with the Lord. And I believe wholeheartedly that every single one of us, if we do what we're supposed to do, I guarantee you, you will see Joel again. This is not the last time you're going to see him. You're going to see Joel again. Because Joel was a remarkable young man. I've heard many people say so many things about my nephew, and, and it does me proud, uh, proud because he, he really did light up every room that he entered. Um, even as a little child, we were blessed. Uh, my wife and I got married 24 years ago. It'll be 24 years in August. And Joel was given a special role in our wedding. Uh, Joel was what we call the Bible boy. And, and Joel carried the Bible and walked down the aisle and said, you know, basically the bride is coming. Here comes the bride. The bride's coming. And Joel, every time, even from a child, lit up every single room he went into. You'll never forget meeting Joel. From the moment he came into this world, you knew Joel was special. Joel was different. Joel was definitely one of a kind. But it's no secret, let's be honest. We all believe that Joel left this world too soon. 27 years is not long enough. And so when this happens and Joel passes this way, it does leave us with more questions than answers. And it leaves us with questions that will test our faith to the very limits of our faith and, and really make us really question every single thing that we believe, even questioning God as to why this young man was taken away so soon. But in spite of the fact that Joel lived a short life, I want you to know this, if you didn't know Joel, but I believe everybody in this room probably didn't know Joel. So you know, Joel might have lived a short life, but Joel lived a full life. Look at some of the stuff Joel was able to do that you heard about. Joel visited other countries. Matter of fact, I, I laughed the other day with Steve and Linda because I said, uh, neither Steve nor Linda had visited other countries, but Joel did. <laughs> Joel received his bachelor's and master's degrees. Joel was an Eagle Scout, and believe me, I gave him all kind of grief about being an Eagle Scout, but Joel was an Eagle Scout, which is a tremendous accomplishment. Joel was a recording artist, although you better not play that song in this church. <laughs> Those of you, if you know, you know, you better not play that song. Joseph in my pocket, looking at your brother, and you Oh, no, you know, I can't do this. I'm doing something. Joe was a Joe was an internet sensation. Joe was an encourager and a philanthropist. 
in addition to being an awesome son, grandson, brother, uncle, nephew, cousin, and friend to all, to put it plainly, we celebrate Joel today because Joel lived his life and made the most of his time. But here's the thing. The celebration of Joel's life does not begin and end today. Today is the day that we mark for the celebration of Joel's life. We put it on our calendar that this will be the day we celebrate the life of Joel. But the celebration of Joel's life does not begin and end today. It continues when we leave this building, when we leave this church. Because how we spend on from this moment on will be an indicator of how much we're really celebrating Joel or her cousin's life. So the text. Second Samuel, beginning 29 verse, we find these words, scripture says, The Lord is our and lights up our darkness. In God's strength, we can crush any army with God's power and scale any wall, for God's way is perfect. And all the Lord's promises will always prove true, for God is a shield for all of those who look to God for protection. As we stated earlier, Joel made the most of his time. I'm, I'm old enough to remember this, and some of you may remember, some of you may have not uh, endured this, but in school, when I was in elementary school, there was actually a category that you got graded on that was called Spends Time Wisely. Y'all remember that report cards? It would say Spends Time Wisely, and the teacher would grade you on how you spent your time. But needless to say, I didn't always get A's in the Spend Time Wisely category, as many of us probably didn't. But, but that made me think about Joel and how Joel spent his time and how we are to spend our time. Because if we're really talking about a young man who, oh, even though he only lived 27 years, but lived 27 of the most full years you ever want to live, you got to ask yourself the question, what am I doing with my time? So today, since our celebration with Joel does not begin nor end today, and we're celebrating how this young man spent his time, about how we can better spend our time. There's three things that God teaches us in this text about how we ought to spend our time, how, uh, according to how Joel spent his time. And here's the first thing we learn. We learn that Joel did not spend his time focusing on situational darkness. Uh. Say that one more time. Joel didn't spend his time focusing on situational darkness. you got to know this about Joel. Joel lived his life every day to the fullest. And there was not a single day Joel spent that Joel did not glorify and lift and praise the name of God. Praise the name of Jesus and everything that Joel did. Joel wasn't one to focus on what I like to call situational darkness. See, situational darkness is the darkness that occurs in our lives based on circumstances and situations. Anybody ever been through some situational darkness? Uh, myself, if I want situational darkness, all I have to do is open up the PNC app and come no. And every time I look at my bank account on PNC, that's some situational darkness I'm dealing with right there. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you don't, can I borrow some money? Amen. So let's move forward. There are going to be times in life where we deal with things that we go through that are just too difficult to bring to words. Um, and, and these times are going to inevitably put us in a dark place. But Joel never let this darkness overtake him. No matter what Joel went through, and, and Joel went through a lot, Joel always glorified God, Joel always praised God, and Joel always had faith in God. Joel never focused on any darkness that was caused by any situation in his life, and it leads us to our text. So in verse 29, the author here, and this is also found uh, as a psalm of David as well, the author writes that the Lord is our lamp and lights up our darkness. So we're reminded that no matter what we go through in life, God is always a lamp. No matter what we're going through in life, God is always giving us light in darkness. So because God is faithful, because God is filled with integrity, because God is pure, because God rescues those who act with humility, God becomes our lamp in darkness. And regardless of the situation, God always brings light to areas in our lives that are filled with darkness. So when I talk about how Job spent his time, it's reflected in this text. Because no matter what Joel went through, Joel always trusted in God, and Joel always chose to look to God's light. You see, my sisters and brothers, choosing God's light is a choice, because oftentimes the darkness in us can be so great that we're going to have to find God's light. But Joel was one that no matter what he went through, this young man made the conscious choice, the conscious decision, and the conscious effort to seek the light of God in every situation that he went through, and if we're going to celebrate Joel, that's how we have to celebrate his life. Regardless of the circumstance, Joel knew that God is my light. 
So today as we celebrate uh, Joel, and, and it's dark right now, I know it's dark for a lot of people. I know right now it's dark for my sister and my brother. I know it's dark for my family. It's dark for everybody that loves Joel. But here's the thing. If Joel were with us right now, Joel would choose the light over the darkness. If Joel were with us physically right now, Joel would choose to crack a joke or make somebody laugh because that meant making you feel comfortable. If Joel was with us right now, Joel would choose to celebrate by seeing God's light instead of focusing on the darkness and all around. And I can't speak to anybody else, but I, for one, am going to celebrate my nephew's life by choosing to focus on the light of God instead of focusing on my situation of darkness. All right. Joel chose to focus on God's light instead of situation of darkness. Second thing Joel did, Joel had God's strength. And Joel crushed armies. Um, and as we celebrate Joel today, not only was Joel able to make it out of situational darkness because of God's light, it was also that light of God that also allowed Joel to have the strength to crush any adversary, to crush any opposition, to crush any army that came Joel's way. And Joel taught us all, and Joel is still teaching us today, that God is stronger than anything we will encounter. And with God's strength, we will be able to do anything. Let me say that one more time for the people to my left. With God's strength, you can do anything. Let me say it to my people, not quite to the left. God's strength will let you do anything. Let me say it specifically to my sister and my brother. Let me tell you what. God's strength is going to help you be able to do anything. And I want to forget about those on my right. God's strength will help you do anything. And Joel, if Joel didn't do anything else, Joel taught us that the strength of God will give us the ability to do anything. So in the text, we look at the first part of verse 30. The author writes, in God's strength, we can crush any army. And understand what the author says here. The author reminds us that we can crush an army through God's strength, not by our strength. One of the problems that we have is we're too busy trying to do everything by ourselves. Too busy trying to do everything on our own. Too busy saying, I can do this. I can handle this. No, you can't do it. No, you can't handle it because God's got strength that we don't have access to unless God gives us access to it. But once God gives us access to the strength that God has, God allows us to crush any army. That's it. You know, it, it was said earlier, and I firmly believe this, my nephew had very few adversaries and enemies, uh, if any at all, but Joel still was strong enough to crush an army. In fact, I'm sure that uh, one of us, if not all of us, on more than one occasion have marveled at all of Joel's strength. We wonder, I wonder, how can Joel be so strong? How can Joel endure so much? How can Joel keep going? I remember Joel had a thing from the moment he was born, from the moment I believe Joel could talk. Joel singled me out and Joel said, I'm going to be better than you. In life, I have a few nephews. I'm not going to mention the other ones that are here, but a couple of them are sitting out his head right now. But they want to be better than me. I don't know why they want to be better than me. I ain't nobody. But nevertheless, they say, I'm going to be better than you. And Joel had this thing. He said, oh, I'm always going to be better than you. And I never told Joel this. I would never dare tell him this while he was on this earth. But guess what? Joel was better than me. <laughs> I never admit it again. I say it one time, he gets one and one on me. He was better than me because I saw the strength that this young man had. And it never was Joel's strength. It was God's strength working through Joel. So as we celebrate Joel today and beyond, celebrate a young man who found his strength in the Lord and who was able to crush armies. Joel was able to outlive and outlast and deny and defy every single prognosis that the doctors gave him. Joel found his strength in the Lord. Therefore, even though Joel had cancer, cancer never had Joel. Because Joel did what Joel wanted to do. Joel did how Joel wanted to live. Joel was fearless. Joel was an overcomer. Joel was stronger than anybody could ever understand. Simply because Joel knew how to tap into the strength of the Lord. So today and beyond, I'm asking you this question. How are you going to find your strength? Many times when, when we get stuck, we, we want to find our strength in a bottle. Let's be honest. Many times when we get stuck, we want to find our strength in a pill. Or, or maybe we'll find our strength uh, somewhere else, and maybe we'll find our strength here or find our strength there. But truth be told, if we're really going to celebrate Joel's life and spend our time the right way, the only place we can find our strength has to be in the Lord. 
And as we gather here today, I encourage you, I implore you, I challenge you, even in this most darkest hour, find the light of the Lord and find your strength in the Lord. Because when we find our strength in the Lord, we understand it may feel like I can't go on any longer, but somehow God gives me the strength to keep on going. It feels like I don't want to get out of the bed in the morning, but somehow, some way, God gives me the strength to make it. Maybe I'm the only one that's been there before. I know it's a funeral, but it's all right for you to shout a little bit with me. Is there anybody here that knows there's been times in my life where I did not know how I was going to make it, did not know how I was going to press on, did not know how I was going to move forward, but by some way, the grace of God, the strength of God, and the power of God, God all wrapped up in me, and before I knew it, I was doing that which I know I did not have the strength to do. Guess what? Maybe that wasn't me. That was God in me. And that was the strength of my nephew, Joel, on the cusses. Joel saw God's light. He never gave in the situational darkness. Joel knew his strength was in the Lord. And here's the last thing about Joel. My brother Michael and I were laughing about this the other day. Uh, Joel never faced a wall he couldn't find. Somebody ought to be shocked right now and tell you why. We complain and we got two good legs. Come on, somebody. We complain about what we can't do. We got two good legs. We complain about what we can't do. It ain't nothing wrong with us. We complain about what we can't do. We're not laying up in a hospital bed, but in spite of, of the fact that he was missing a leg, in spite of the fact Joel was wrapped with illness, in spite of the fact Joel was suffering in pain, every single wall Joel came to, every single obstacle Joel came back to face with, every demon, every power, every problem, every situation, every circumstance, Joel was able, by the grace of God, to climb every wall. And if Joel could do it with one leg, we ought to be able to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I'm gonna leave y'all alone because I'm gonna give you two more minutes on the show. That's part of the text with you. The second part of verse 30. After talking about the strength of the Lord, the author writes, But my God, I can scale any wall. When I got to read that text, my brother Michael said, No, you need to check out what the Bible says in Psalm. And you need to check out what the Bible says in 2 Samuel. When I read this text, and, and it said that with my God, I can scale any wall. I begin to realize there's no wall that's too big for God to put us over. So if we celebrate Joel today, we're celebrating a wall climber. Like me, Joel was a fan of Spider Man, and just like Spider Man, Joel was a wall climber. Joel battled cancer and kept on climbing. Joel had his leg amputated and kept on climbing. Joel was able to better navigate with one leg. Most of us ain't going to do two. Joel kept climbing. Joel never stopped overcoming. Joel never stopped doing. Joel never stopped going. Joel never stopped loving. Joel never stopped living. Joel never stopped climbing. Because Joel knew that I got situational darkness, but I also got God's life. Joel knew that I the strength that you ain't put in me. So you tell me I'm away from me. So I'm going to climb every wall. I'm going to climb every wall. Do I have any wall problems in here today? On Wednesday, February 22nd, in that room, it looked like darkness. His daddy was holding his hand, and mama was rubbing his feet. It looked like darkness. The family was enveloped and engulfed in darkness, but in the midst of our darkness, God showed Joel the light. Oh, somebody ought to shout with me today, but on that Wednesday, when Joel saw that light, God said, It's time to get on up, Joel.
Don't focus on the dark. Hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. Yeah, yeah. Don't focus on the dark. When there's so much light around. God will give you strength that you never knew you had. And you got a thing to do with Linda Cousin or Stephen Cousin or Joseph Cousin. It's got to do with the fact that God gives us a measure of strength that only God can give. And when it's all said, and when it's all done, whatever wall you have in front of you, even the wall that's the loss of your child, God's going to give you the strength to climb that wall. God's going to give you the strength to celebrate your family. Let's all go. I love you, my brother. Let's all go. Let's all go. We shall see you. This time, not only was it a powerful word, but everything that was said by his black brothers and by everyone was true about children. And one of the things I just like to say, I remember we had his leg amputated. And we were in the hospital and I was there. And he had just got it done. I know Sister Linda, he just got it done. He put on that, once he got his, he put on that lady and got him start moving around the room. And Linda said, Joe, sit down now, sit down. He said, come on, mama, I got your door. I got your door. I just had to say that because I, everything that was said was true about me. And they get turned over to the floor of the letters. I'd like to have seven women to come down to help with flowers, and we'd like for the Paul girls to come down for it. Thank <laughs> you. 